Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to properly do auto crafting for your ME system. First thing you're going to need is obviously an ME system with some drives. Of course, I'm on creative, so I spawned in the best drives. I don't know why, but I did. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to pull a cable off of your ME controller. And you can either use cables, the, the ones from Applied Energy Sticks, or you can use Ender IO ones. I like these ones more because they're smaller. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to our, our auto crafter. To make this auto crafter, we need interfaces and molecular assemblers. The most efficient way to do this is to have a molecular assembler in the middle and have six interfaces surrounding it, like such. I, I believe we only need to attach it from one side, and then if we come to this interface terminal to see where we can, like where these interfaces are, We'll see there's six of them and you'll see there's only a full line which can hold nine patterns the next part is being able to craft such a thing being able to make it craft like know the crafting race so that didn't work what we're gonna do is uh we got sticks here right and we want to be able to auto craft this so what we do is we come over we make a pattern terminal and we come over to it we grab our wood and we go ahead and make it in a stick fashion and we click the encode pattern make sure you have blank patterns these aren't entirely hard to make i suggest using the certus quartz instead of the pure these uh ME interfaces aren't that hard to make either same with uh, the molecular molecular assembler anyways with that being said we're gonna go ahead and put this in there as you can see we can now craft sticks so let's figure out i'm gonna see if we can actually do it from this one and we can we just have to connect it from one spot anyways what's next is we need to uh we want to do we want to go farther into this we want to have more than just make sticks because that's kind of useless all right and it also can't craft a lot of things when you need them such as if you want iron you have no iron and but you have uh ore and it's uh it's a little tedious to walk over to your machines and just put them in instead you can auto craft so what you do is you can either use a redstone furnace or any other furnace for that matter i believe but i you'd probably use redstone furnaces or alloy smelters and you're gonna pull it over like such, make sure you in there. I can't talk. <laughs> Very bad at doing this. Anyways, you're gonna place it on the machine, and you're gonna put the interface around the side. You can put it on the top or the the back, I believe. I I prefer the top. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it from the controller, and make sure you connect it into these machines. Now, what's next is we need to be able to let it know that it's gonna craft this. So let's go ahead and grab. Iron. Iron ore, right? And we're also going to grab iron. Because it needs to know how to craft it. So we're also going to put some uh, creative energy cells beneath these. As you can see, now they're getting power. Not that fast, surprisingly. Anyways, it's now connected to both of these, right? So, we need to figure out, it, we need to let it know what it can what it needs to craft so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put one iron ore in there then we're gonna put this instead of crafting pattern to processing pattern so it knows that it will make an iron ingot instead now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this and we're gonna put it in here we're gonna put the iron ore in here and then we're gonna see that we can craft it now we're gonna craft it we've but as you can see we can't start it that's because we don't have a crafting uh, unit or storage. So let's go ahead and uh, spawn ourselves in some uh, storage. It will take a second to go online, but just keep in mind, if you connect them all like this, you're not going to have four individual crafting things because they're all connected. If you want to do that, you need to simply separate them. So now we have one of our the big ones. or. Uh, we have our, like, this would be our best crafting, because it has a lot, so we'd be able to craft a lot. And then we have two more extra, so that we can craft multiple things at a time. Now, we're going to go ahead and try to craft one now. 
see the furnace? It's on. Now let's go check it out. Check it out. Okay, so it's done cooking. Wait, there's no iron. That's m what you might be wondering if you haven't done this before. Now what you need to do is uh, go ahead and get an item conduit. So let's go ahead and grab one. Item conduit. And we'll see. It's not in here. In fact, it moved over here. It's because that's, that's because we forgot to do this. Go ahead and turn these off for a second. Let's try that again just to prove to you that I kind of forgot about that. So we're going to come over here and we're going to see. It won't turn on because we need to have an input from the top because that's where the interface is. But it's not going out. So we need to have an output on the back or the side and we're going to get an item conduit and bring it up. Put this on insert. Put this on extract with redstone. And it's not there. So it's in the MA system. And that's how you properly set this up. So there is more complicated ways to do this. Or there is more thing complicated things we can make with the alloy smelter, such as uh what is it? Alloys in themselves. So if we do alloy, let's uh let's make some vibrant alloy. To make that, what we need to do is uh hold on. We need to be able to make energetic. So we need glowstone, gold, and redstone. And then we need to make vibrant, we need ender pearls and the uh energetic. So let's go ahead and spawn that stuff in. So let's go ahead and grab some ender pearls. Glowstone. Redstone. And gold. So the first part is we're going to need to make one from the start. Just to prove, just to tell it what we're actually making. Because if it doesn't know what we're making and it's just putting items in, it won't do it. So this is going to take a while. So what we have, to, what I would suggest doing is upgrading with an octodeck capacitor, and we'll go faster. What I also suggest is making uh, resident furnaces, but they'll, they won't just be faster. Like as soon as you place them, you need to put some augmentations in here, the speed ones. So now it's done with energetic alloy. Come over here to the pattern terminal. Make sure we're on processing pattern and clear that. Put one gold, put one redstone, put one glowstone, and then put the energetic alloy. You gotta make sure you have the right amount of this stuff, or else when you auto craft, say one of these, and instead make two of these, but you have it set up as one, it will make more. Essentially. So if you order three, it will make f four. You see? So... That's kind of how it works. Like, if you only put one in and it makes two, and you order three, it's going to make the extra one. So, it, it would have done that either way. But, it's just good to do this. When uh, bigger numbers, such as quartz glass, for these parts, you're going to need four, four, four for the quartz. And if you don't do that, it, it won't work. Because you need 12 to make the quartz glass, obviously. So now we're going to encode it. We're going to pop it in this... Uh, Pop it in here. We gotta make sure we have a uh, input. Oh, recipes. Oh, wow. Lag. Holy crap. I mean, we're gonna configure I/O. And we're gonna pull, and we're gonna push. We're gonna extract and insert. And uh, here we are. So now it knows how to craft energy alloy. We're gonna craft another one. Oh wait, we're missing gold, iron, and er gold, redstone, and glowstone. You can see it's smelting, and uh, it instantly goes back into the system. Now we're gonna teach it. Now what we're gonna teach it is how to do the next part, which is uh, making the uh, I forgot what it's called. Vibrant, yeah, vibrant. Go ahead and uh, first make one, and it should go straight into the ME system because it automatically inputs back into the interface. 
And then we're going to put this a vibrant alloy right here. Energetic. Oh, make sure we have one of these. And uh, make sure it's on processing pattern. Put that in there. And then go ahead and put it in this. Now, if we go ahead and make one from scratch, what we're just going to do is it's going to make the first one. And then it's going to go back in. Or it should. Oh, it has no ender pearls. It's going to go back in. I think it stopped because I didn't have any ender pearls. So let's go ahead and uh, let's try that again. You got to make sure you have the right materials. So it's going to first smelt the vibrant. And it's going to go back in and it's going to make the uh, next one. You see, now it's vibrant. So you can do this with a lot of things. So, for example, machine frames, you're going to be making these later on. And uh, the resonant ones requires silver, reinforced frame, machine frame, and it's going to require an enderium gear. I suggest, I suggest making it know how to autocraft enderium. And then from there, you need to autocraft this, and then autocraft these, and then autocraft that, and then autocraft that, 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 blah, blah, blah. So, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's manual labor at the start, but it's all worth it in the end. So, that's how you uh, do autocrafting. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys later.